it, thank you. Thank you for staying till the end. Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay. People Me too. Are <laughs> It, it's hard not to be okay after watching this film. There's a lot of energy, but there's also a lot of quietness, and uh, there's a lot of duality and parallelism between the characters, between the chapters, and the way you're presenting, um, you know, a slow iced, and then anxiety about life. So I think it's really difficult not to feel satisfied, excited, and quiet at the same time, which is rare in a film. Mm. Now you have to think about that. Sí. Um, pensaba también que esta película cobró, cobra otro sentido hoy. Hoy me refiero a... Esta película se empezó a filmar en el 2018, uh -huh. es decir, antes de la pandemia. Eh, y claramente eh, cambió algo en el mundo ¿no? de manera crucial. ¿no? El mundo hoy es un lugar peor. Es un lugar lleno de odio, lleno de guerras, de presidentes locos, eh, con discursos de odio y de agresión. Eh, entonces, creo que la película, que claramente es una película eh, que evita una zona de crueldad en la que creo que el cine y el mundo eh, eh, habitan en exceso, eh, ocupa un lugar especial en este momento. Uh, I was also thinking about this uh, today. I feel like the film takes on another meaning today. Uh, when I started filming in, uh, the movie started filming in 2018, this was before the pandemic, and clearly the world has changed in that time in a crucial way. It's worse. Uh, there is a lot of hate, wars, crazy presidents with um, uh, discourses of aggression and hate. And in a way, I feel like this a film avoids the cruelty that the world and cinema itself inhabits. So I think it holds a special place in that in that sense. So you started working on the film before the pandemic, yeah. and you had a break in between. Did, were you shooting in order, or no, 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 no? Okay, so but the actors are aging. Yeah. So. How did you do that? This is an entiendo perfecto. <coughs> bueno, hay algo de el paso del tiempo en la película y el paso del tiempo en el proceso de hacer la película que se volvió increíblemente mmm, sincronizado porque el tiempo que Morán pasa en la cárcel son tres años y medio, por lo tanto el, el tiempo del relato son aproximadamente eh, un poco más de tres años y medio, ¿no? Yeah. Este, que es más o menos el tiempo que estuvimos filmando. La... <risa> y es algo insólito, esto es algo que me di cuenta mucho después. Eh, eh, lo que sí, en cierto momento del rodaje, del último del último periodo de filmación, me di cuenta que estaba bueno utilizar a mis hijos que trabajan en, que ya había, con los que ya había filmado cuando ellos tenían eh, 10 y 6 años y ahora tenían 14 eh, y 10 años. Entonces el paso del tiempo en ellos me parecía como una especie de efecto medio link later, un, 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 un buen um, evidencia de ese, de ese tiempo que estaba pasando. Y entonces inventé una escena, la misma, la de la clase de música, cuatro años después. 
you understand, you understand Spanish. I understand your Spanish. Ah, you my Spanish. I don't understand everybody's Spanish, but yours is very uh, okay. eloquent and uh, you articulate very well. Oh, you must you. be from a very good uh, city. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Sorry. Uh, there's. <laughs> Uh, there's something about the passing of time in, in the process of making the film that became really synchronized. Um, we have Moran that spends three and a half years in prison, so the time of the film ended up uh, synchronizing with the time that it took to take the film, to, to, to actually shoot it. I realized that afterwards. Um, and I, I created... Uh, a scene with with my kids. I thought it was a good use of my kids. When uh, I we first uh, shot the scene, um, they were 10 and six years old, and I decided to shoot them again when they were 14 and 10 years old. So the passing of time in them um, evidenced the passing of time within the film and the shooting itself. Um, I want to ask a question about the origin of the film because um, I understand that you were inspired by uh, Hugo Frigonese film, Hardly a Criminal, which takes the premises of the, the heist um, just, you know, to not work. Uh, and it's also, it's something that you explored a little bit in your uh, previous work, but you go way further in here, which like it's with the two parts and the, the two characters, and I was wondering if you wanted to talk about um, the idea of exploring that concept and what was the process to push it forward for you um, in terms of writing yeah. and, and then shooting. Sí. Um, en realidad, no es que fui inspirada, o sea, no es una película inspirada en apenas un delincuente, más bien es una película en contra de apenas un delincuente. It's a film against. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a weird remake in, in, in that sense. Um, it's not a remake. Um, I mean, it's using an idea to go further. Okay. Yes. No, el, el, el asunto es que uh, yo recibí la, la propuesta por parte de un productor de hacer la remake de Apenas un delincuente de Hugo Fregonese. Vi la película que no había visto y la diferencia es una película de después de post Segunda Guerra Mundial. El mundo era muy diferente, el personaje eh, era un personaje muy poco empático y, y, y cuyo objetivo era ser millonario, tener una vida lujosa. Y entonces no me interesó, no me interesaba... Esa, esa, la esencia de ese personaje. ¿no? Y yo creo que hay algo en el cine, o por lo menos en mi forma de trabajar, que yo necesito tener una relación muy íntima con el protagonista de las películas. Uh -huh. tengo, tengo que tener un entendimiento. Si no, 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 no sé cómo filmar. Entonces aborté esa, esa, ese proyecto. Pero siguió la idea de el, des, de, el desafío de dialogar con el viejo cine argentino me interesaba. Me interesaba porque... Eh, I can stop and puedo parar acá y, y seguir. Pues si no va a ser... Um, so I actually had a producer ask me to make a remake of uh, Fredonese's film. And I got to watch it. And this is something that takes place post-World War. And I didn't feel like the character was empathetic. You know, he was really after becoming a millionaire and living a life of luxury. And I wasn't interested in that. I wasn't interested in the essence of what this character was. And there's, there's something in the way that I work. I, I feel like I need to create intimacy with my main character. I need to understand where they're coming from. Um, and I don't know how to do a film if I don't have that. Um, but so I, 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 I pushed off that project. But the idea of having or of being in dialogue with old Argentine cinema remained. Y entonces ahí entendí que tenía que 
hacer otra cosa, pero me interesaba utilizar esa premisa. Y ahí apareció otra película, claramente. Apareció Román, <coughs> apareció la idea de dos destinos diferentes y de una idea que yo tenía, que fue la primera idea que tuve, que es, quiero filmar una película de robo y una película que sea como un partido de campaña de Jean Renoir. Es decir, que, que, que ambas dimensiones puedan convivir. Eh, ese fue como mi desafío. No es que después hice un partido de campaña, sino que tuve, es, como, como idea primera, tuve, eh, quería llegar a una narración mucho más impresionista, mucho más libre. I understood that I needed to do something else. I wanted to keep the premise, and that's when the idea of Roman appeared and these two destinies. Um, I was also interested in combining this heist genre with um, uh, Une Partie de Campagne from a uh, film by Jean Renoir. And that was my challenge for these two things to cohabitate. Film Noir and the Film Renoir. Excellent. <laughs> Good. You, and, and you just came up with it, right? Uh -huh. You just came up with this. Yes. yes. <laughs> We're going to put this on the poster and okay. the slogan. Um, uh, yeah, no, it, yeah. Noir and Renoir. You uh -huh. know. Mm -hmm. But the, yeah, the idea of duality in the film is actually super, very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. And everything as like it works with the names uh you know it's the yeah, same it the same names it works with the bank and the prison uh the the freedom and the heaviness of life uh, at the same time both characters are not extremely sympathetic uh they're not super open you they're real But they're not, it's not, you know, like, they're not this happy go lucky, like, yeah, I'll become rich type of characters. They're very real. But I like the way you explore each of them, their way to want to escape their, their, their routine. The richness is not millionaire, just like, I'm done with work. And the other one, like, uh, life is boring. So can you talk about, like, creating this duality in the two characters, or Roman and, and, and uh, no. Moran? So many letters, I got confused. Um, tengo que confesar que yo nunca pienso mucho en cómo construir un personaje. Más bien que creo ciertas condiciones en las que ese personaje puede habitar la película. Pero no pienso en, en, en la psicología o en, o en rasgos característicos de cada uno de los personajes. Pienso en los actores eh, y pienso en cosas que me gustaría ver a, eh, hacer a esos actores. Eh, en ese sentido, mi trabajo eh, es, es, es más documental. Mi, mi abordaje sobre la ficción es más documental. I must confess, I never really think about character building per se. I think about building the spaces where they're going to in th th that they're going to inhabit. And the conditions. It's, it's not only spaces, but conditions. Spaces and conditions. Um, I, I don't really think about their characteristics or their or the psychology of, of these characters. I think of the actors and of the things I want to see these actors do. And in that sense, my approach to fiction is um, is a similar is more uh, leaning towards a documentary. Y en todo caso, a esa uh, relación documental con los actores le superpongo una serie de elementos y de gestos propios del cine. Y entonces ahí aparecen esos juegos de duplicación, de espejo, de split screen, de, de anagramas, de personajes de, del toro y garrincha, 
de es, es, ahí empieza como un juego, como un juego, un juego de seducción también, ¿no? De seducción mío con, con el cine y el cine conmigo. And in this in this approach, this documentary approach, and this in the relationship with the actors, I insert some of the language of cinema. I, the, I suggest uh, certain gestures, and this is where all of this play comes in, right? The anagrams, the mirroring, um, the play with the characters, with Garrinche and Del Toro being played by the same actor. And there's also this play uh, with seduction. Is my seduction towards cinema and vice versa? Y pa para terminar con esto, eh, eh, <coughs> me gustaba, en relación a la duplicidad, me gustaba que hay como una... Hay dos, hay dos relatos, ¿no? Está el relato de Román y el relato de Morán. ¿no? Y Morán es alguien que de entrada tiene una revelación, tiene una gran pregunta, ¿no? que vivimos para trabajar. ¿no? Él está obsesionado con esa idea de que nuestra vida está gobernada por el trabajo y hay que hacer algo. Entonces la película de Morán es cómo esa revelación se expande aún más cuando él encuentra el tiempo improductivo que es el momento que él está en las montañas. Y la película de Román es que él encuentra el tiempo improductivo y llega finalmente a esa revelación al final. ¿no? Tiene algo un poco borgiano en ese sentido, como de, de circuitos muy propios de, de Jorge Luis Borges. And just to finish, just to wrap this up, in relation to the duplicity, I liked having the two narratives of Moran and Roman. So Moran, he starts out with this revelation, this great question that we live to work, that our life is governed by work. And um, he expands this idea when he finds out about unproductive time. So. His film, his part of the film, is about finding this out, and it's very Borges-like. This, 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 um, this finding that he gets. Roman, Roman, Roman. No, que ro la, la, la historia de Roman es como él. Ah, no te lo conté. No, no solo llega hasta esta morena. Ah, okay. No, no, y la, y la, la historia de Román es, es eso, es cómo él llega a, a esa revelación a la que Morán tuvo al comienzo, pensé que lo había dicho. And, and Roman is, uh, his journey is how he gets to Morán's initial revelation. I'm going to try to read your mind too, to see if I can find the next answer, just looking at you. Okay. <laughs> That's right. Uh, <laughs> you said something yesterday that uh, struck me because I didn't notice that uh, the money they're stealing are in dollars. And I'm not sure a lot of Americans would notice that or w are aware that, you know, you have two currencies in Argentina. Mm. So my first thing was like, I don't want to, like if they're stealing so much, it's not that much money. It's coming no. out of jail with inflation. It's going right back to work at mm. McDonald's. But you told me it was in, in, in dollar when you started talking about inflation in Argentina, which changed a lot from where you were shooting to after it was shot. Quite a lot. Yes. So uh, it's actually interesting because it reflects the film and reality. Sí. En realidad, eh, cuando yo estaba escribiendo el guión, de entradas entendí que no podía robar pesos. Eh, ahí hay una gran diferencia con la película de Hugo Fregonese porque cuando Hugo Fregonese filma la película, en Argentina no había inflación, tampoco había deuda externa. Hoy es un país, después ya de, lleva 50 años de deuda externa con el Fondo Monetario Internacional, eh, y eso so, somete al país en una permanente crisis económica. Eh, crisis económica que hace que el peso tenga muy poco valor. 
Por lo tanto, cuando yo estaba escribiendo, sabía que no podía poner pesos. Porque si yo ponía pesos, si lo que robaba era un monto de pesos, rápidamente este, no, la, la película iba a perder eh, peso, iba a perder valor. Pero además, eh, no, no tendría sentido en Argentina que un empleado de banco robe pesos y los esconda, precisamente porque el peso no vale nada. Entonces tenía que ser, tenía que ser dólares. Este, eso, y, y, el, y el dólar es una moneda eh, muy corriente en, en Argentina. Todo el tiempo estamos pensando en cuánto, cuánto, en cuánto está el dólar, ahorrar en dólares. Todo el tiempo estamos como en esa especie de, de, duali, de duplicidad también. Pero es un dólar dólar. ¿Es el mismo? No, es American dólares. No, no, tenemos currency is Argentine peso. You, you, we use American dollars because peso is devaluating all the time. So we save money in, in dollars. What is it permitted? Because sometimes the government decided not to, decides not to, to save money in dollars. Stupid thing. So when when I was writing the script, which is something again that differs from Hugo Fregonese's film, uh, you know, in his film there's no inflation. When he does his film, there's no external debt. Uh, today, Argentina has been uh, for the past 50 years in debt with the um, IMF. And this keeps the country in a constant economic crisis. And it keeps the value of the peso very low. So I knew from the start that if I were to steal in pesos, um, the, that the value would, um, uh, would, the value of this money would, uh, would go down very quickly. So it didn't make sense. And it wouldn't have made sense in Argentina Uh, to steal pesos because they're they're very worthless. They they're they're worthless, and the dollar is a common currency in Argentina. Which again, we come back to this sense of duplicity. Thank you. Uh, before we wrap, wrap up, I have a very interesting question for you, because in the introduction you mentioned you were very honored to be in the festival, yeah. and there were so many directors you wanted to meet. So I want to know which one you want to meet. <coughs> and what, what, like, you know, there's a lot of people here, and you can you have your pick. Okay, no, um, it's not a trick question. No, no, I know, I know, I understood. I, I was thinking uh, basically in Aki Kaurismaki, which is a filmmaker that I really love. Um, and the other day in in London, uh, I had a dinner with the two protagonists of uh, oh. Fallen Leaves, uh, Alma, uh, Alma and Juicy. And Ju and Juicy. Okay, yeah. Um, uh, but when you when I when I when I came in, I saw the picture of of Jim Jarmusch, which is a filmmaker very important to me, essential to my um, education, because I started filming in I I, st I started studying at the film school in, in 91, 1991. Um, so Stranger Than Paradise, released in 92 in Argentina. And I remember a teacher of, of I don't know which subject, uh, uh, he uh, pointed at me and said, hey, Rodrigo, come, come in. Uh, you know um, where X, X cinema, you know, Lorca, which is a cinema, still alive in Buenos Aires. Uh, do you know where, how to reach uh, Lorca, the cinema? Yes. Uh, you have to take, you know, 29 line, the bus line. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, now you have to go there and you have to see a film. And I, and I, I did that and I took the bus and, and, and went to see Stranger Than Paradise. And as soon as, as the, f the film f um, f finished, um, I was another person, I mean. Um, because it was the first time I, I saw New York in, in the way Jarmusch uh, shot this city and with this a sequence shots, fixed shots uh, with the uh, blacks in the middle 
and this dry sense of humor, many things that were, you know, very important at the time for, to my, yes, to my, 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 my sense, sensibility, sensitive. Yeah. yeah. It's a very good answer. Uh, I think we can take one audience question. We have microphones. Yeah. Sorry, I wasn't. Stop. Raise your hand. You have someone here. If you don't mind, can I ask a question in Spanish? Yeah, uh, Cordelia can translate. Uh, the other. Aparte de. Buenos días. Hola. Gracias por la película. Um, aparte de cuestión de dólares y pesos. La cuánto usted piensa que esta idea de trabajos o rutinas busca la libertad, libertad que piensa cada uno, le refleja la sociedad de sociedad argentina de hoy, particularmente los jóvenes. O sea, ¿cuánto esta película les, uh, tiene resonancia con los pensamientos de los jóvenes de hoy en Buenos Aires o provincias? Um, aside from the question about pesos and dollars, I, I was wondering uh, how much does, does this film resonate with the youth of the, in Argentina today? It's hard to answer that because I don't know what's yaf in Argentina at the moment. The 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 you know in in two weeks we will have elections, and there's a crazy guy who's from the ultra right wing uh, that he he wants to make uh, disappear the, the state. You no, know, Argentina has a strong state and public strong public policies since many years. Um, and something that everybody is surprised is that the main support he has is comes from young people. So I don't know what really uh, answer to your question because uh, I'm astonished about that situation now in in in, our, in my country. works or the works they are not necessarily happy but I instead of looking certain things rewarding experiences or self-realization in their um, environment looking for something they haven't had they haven't even found what they are is this something you're seeing or I mean you said you don't know the use to these days but do you see in the society that's also kind of emerging idea now, or it was more pre-pandemic situation, and if the pandemic also changed this paradigm? Yo creo que la pandemia profundizó eh, lo peor del capitalismo y, y por lo tanto la idea de que el trabajo es todo eh, es la que prevalece. Entonces la película hoy trata de instalar bueno, otra idea, otra posición frente a ese avance brutal del capitalismo y de las compañías y de las empresas sobre nuestra sociedad y sobre nuestras relaciones humanas que están digitadas por las empresas, ¿no? Uno tiene una conversación sobre, no sé, sobre muebles y cuando ves tu celular tenés publicidades de muebles y no nos preguntamos ya eh, esa vigilancia, si es, este, está bien, está mal, nadie se pregunta más nada. Estamos como... Creo que la pandemia fue, fue una especie de tercera guerra mundial en términos de efectos sobre el mundo. I think the pandemic exacerbated the worst of capitalism. This idea that work is everything prevailed. 
And what this film tries to do is to show a different standing. Uh, the idea that human relationships are so much mediated by these companies. You know, we, we may have a conversation about furniture and next thing you know, you're getting ads for furniture on your phone and nobody questions this hyper vigilance anymore. In many ways, the pandemic was a sort of World War III. We unfortunately yeah. We're running out of time. Yeah. Because Hurry up, you know. No, it's be last because you had you such long you had such long credits. Yeah. <laughs> you know? uh, but it was wonderful to have you here. I it want also it. to mention that your film is a Argentine uh, nomination for the Academy Award. That's true. So you know, which is, uh, I think it's a big misunderstanding, <laughs> but it's it's nice. Uh, really? <laughs> Three hours film, you know, like this. No, against uh, capitalism yeah exactly you know it's it's good you're doing you're doing your work for changing the world <laughs> but anyway thank you so much and i know you're back also uh, the movie is opening next week and you'll be back for yeah sure for yeah, more yeah. q a's and we'll we'll cut the credits way at the beginning next I, time we will, we will do that yeah thank you thank you so thank much you